Hello, hello. Is this a happy face? <laughs> Allison's in school. God, I've got five hours of freedom. <laughs> Damn, I come home. I come home from delivering her to school. And I notice, I go, hell, the fireplace isn't on. Now, here in Australia, we don't use the fireplace a lot. But hell, sometimes it's one below zero out there. The kangaroos are pounding on the damn door to get in. I look at the fireplace and go, holy shit, another expense. You know, the plumbers wanted $2,000 to put a spigot on the jacuzzi tub. I said, you know what, I'm going to carry the water in in buckets for that price. And I have. <laughs> I have. And I come home. The fireplace isn't working, and it's an electronic fireplace, so I thought, oh shit. The electricity went off, the new thermostat that I put in has gone to shit, the uh, sensor on the pilot light ain't working, I'm going, holy crap, here I am on my back all day long <laughs> trying to be a fireplace man. <laughs> so I said to myself, self! You live with Allison. The first thing you do is check. Did she put her blankets and her special bunny in the fireplace and it won't turn on? Look for food. Any glasses of, of juice or candy, cookies, cake, pie. Yes, even ice cream could be in the fireplace. God dang it. So then I said, well... That's a brand new thermostat I put on the wall. Why don't I go over and check it first, maybe? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I can't see shit, so I go up and get my glasses. Now, these are the glasses that I can see two feet with. These are the glasses I can see a half a mile with. And the damn thermostat I can't see again. I'm going, oh, God. Uh, Allison! Allison, you're driving an old man to his grave. So I said, well, screw it. It ain't working. Just start pushing some buttons. That's what Allison does. I pushed the first button. I think it said heat. And the damn fireplace came right on. <laughs> There's no way that wasn't Allison. Now, she's going to tell me, Mr. Nobody, he lives in every house. He lives in every house that has children. Uh, Mrs. Nobody, I've never seen her, but Mr. Nobody, he's everywhere. So anyway, the fireplace here in Argentina, oh, not Argentina, I'm in uh, Australia, Kangaroo City, uh, is now working again. So I've got to put some kind of a, pl everything has a lock on it in this house. Now I have to buy one of those plastic things that goes over a thermostat that you can't reach in and screw with the thermostat. I'm telling you, that kid has cost me so many thousands of dollars to try to secure a house. You know, Hot Hands Allison, one of you named her Hot Hands. I'm telling you, that kid. <laughs> anyway, this is Sir David the Bard. And um, <laughs> my new office, I just wanted to show you. I told you I got some of the drywall up. And <laughs> the day I took the safe, <laughs> Woke up in the morning and Allison has got the door open going, Goodbye! And I, what happened? They took the safe dad. So I changed and I put my easy chair. Now, I'm going to stand up, which, which you... <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Yeah! Look at the easy chair there, yeah! <laughs> the bard took your money <laughs> for the hungry Filipino children, went to DI and bought that crap chair. <laughs> so anyway... I can sit in here now uh, and get away from Allison. Uh, I can't lock the door because she can pick any door lock uh, made by man or God. Uh, I can sit in here and watch uh, myself. <laughs> I told you I was bipolar. I've made all these videos for myself and I sit here, hey, that's funny. No, that's not funny. That's not good. Anyway, I know I have a subject. I think it's on the screen here, so I'm going to... Oh, yes, here it is here. Um, now, I know Davis School District very well. Uh, it's above uh, Salt Lake City. Davis uh, is up in uh, Bountiful, Farmington, um, 
some nice community and a lot of expensive houses, million dollar houses up on the Banshee Hills. It's a rich, rich, rich school district. And it's a Mormon, Mormon, Mormon school district. <laughs> Look at some of my other videos, some of the antics that the schools play uh, when conference comes around and dress their kids up in bozo costumes and uh, try to terrorize the non-members. But anyway, um, there was a book uh, in the library. And the book was bought by some thoughtful people uh, that there was a child that was in the school district that had two mothers. And um, so this lesbian couple was raising uh, this, this daughter. Well, they wanted to have inclusion. What the hell's wrong with that? The Mormons will find something. <laughs> so anyway, the Mormon church is exclusion. If you're not in, you're out. If you don't agree, you're Satan. It's black and white. There is no inclusion in the Mormon church. So, they put it up on the bookshelf, so if any children wanted to come in. Now, this is elementary school. Okay, if any children wanted to come in and check out the two mothers book, they could. I thought there was freedom of the, the press. And I thought there was freedom of religion. Now, if a parent says to their child, don't check out the lesbo books, <laughs> they have a right to do that. It's their child. And they have a right to restrict that child. But they don't have a right to restrict my child or your child. They cannot impose those damn Mormon uh, sexual, if you want to call them that, non-sexual human experiences. Well, a few LDS people got together, and in Utah, if you get more than two LDS people together, you can pass a new law. <laughs> you can pass any law that you want, and then the feds have to come in, slap the Mormons, and go, that's shit, don't do that, and then the law falls. Well, that's what happened. Two or three Mormons or whatever got together, and ooh, they were whispering about the lesbo mom and lesbo kids. <laughs> Jeez, it went on and on. And so finally... Uh, the library uh, took the books off the shelf due to the Mormon church's illegal public pressure. Well, thank the atheist God for the ACLU. Pay me, lay me, and ail me for the Mormons. ACLU went to court and they went and said to the judge, What the hell? And the judge said to the Mormons, What the hell? you don't want your kid to read it, tell him not to read it. And he made him put it back on the shelf. So I go, yay, America. <laughs> Even if you live uh, in Australia, I, I still cheer America, especially when the Mormons <laughs> get their boot up their ass all the time, all the time in Utah. Uh, I told you once in another video, I'm off the subject, uh, the HOV, which is the uh, diamond lane, fast lane, uh, on the uh, Interstate 15 here in Utah. Not here in Utah, in Australia. I he I've heard about it and I've seen pictures of it up there. Well, the HOV lane um, for, um, I can't think of the name of it, uh, for many people in the car. It's not like the Philippines, 21 people on a motorcycle. That doesn't count in the HOV, high occupancy uh, vehicles. Well, anyway, um, that was paid for by the federal government. And Utah uses it. But they don't enforce any of the laws. You can cross over the double line anytime you want. You can go 75, 85, 95. No one knows. If there's somebody in the car with you, no one can tell. There's no... <laughs> you can't see through tinted windows. So anyway, the feds had to come in just like they did with Brigham Young, just like they had to with Joseph Smith, and go, what the hell? We're going to take the HOV lane out of Utah and give it to California. Well, now the Mormons are out there and the highway patrolmen are out there going, we got to save the HOV lane. So anyway, you can get the Lesbo book <laughs> in the Davis County school system. Screw the Mormons. They're not allowed to enforce their cult beliefs upon the general population. I don't know why they don't understand that. I don't want my kids to take drugs. I don't want my kids to drink or, or to do things that are going to hurt their life. I don't require the cigarette companies and the liquor companies, etc., etc., to all be disbanded. My job is to teach my child. 
don't do that shit. And they don't, so far. So the Mormons, they want the stores closed on Sunday because they want you to feel bad that you're not in church. That you should be in church. Sunday is for church and we close our stores here to put pressures on the non-members and on the apostates like Sir David the Bard. I can still get a Coke at a gas station, so I'm alright. So anyway, the ACLU has saved the day again. <laughs> Almost weekly in Utah, the ACLU uh, is busy. Is very busy. So now let me leave you one more. Um, I've said this on other videos, but so many of you are lazy as hell. I got 800 videos, and if I don't do one for three days, you can't find 680 other videos to look at. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> anyway. Utah Mormons believe that if you hear about lesbian or gay people or you see them, you will become gay. <laughs> I had a friend over here, uh, and he's a Mormon. Uh, he's a returned missionary, and uh, he had to show his temple recommend and his garments before he let his ass in the door. <laughs> and then told him to shut up. Don't send any of his friends over here in suits. <laughs> he and I get along pretty well. And I said, Jonathan, I said, let me, let me just ask you a flat-out question. If a guy comes up to you, nice guy in a suit, maybe carrying a Book of Mormon and a name badge, and he says to you, I'd like to recruit you. I say, all right, well, what are, are we going to join? He says, well, you're going to join the huge lesbian and gay couples on the earth. And I, of course, ask questions because I'm bipolar, and I said, well, what do you have to do to be in this group? You, oh, you have to pull your friend's pants down or you can go in a bathroom and just do it with a stranger and take your penis out and let him rub it or suck on it and then you do the same thing. So now let me, let me see if I can get this straight. If I engage in this behavior, then I can belong to your lesbian or gay club. Yes. So, no more vaginas for the bard. No. No. Penises only. I'd say, well, you know, I'm getting to be 65 years old. I've seen a lot of life. I've, I've lived a lot of life. In all these years, a penis has never been one of my desires to become friends with, other than my own. So this has to be with strangers. Oh, I can get a gay, uh, okay, I can get a gay partner. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. I said to John, I said, Jonathan, is there anything in this world that would make you want to play with another man's penis and put it where no man has gone before than having your sweet wife's vagina? He said, no. I said, they couldn't recruit me either. Now, if they can recruit people, I don't care. I don't think they can. I think there's some people in the gray area that are bisexual and whatever. But uh, to take a heterosexual person that has dreamed of vaginas every night of my days on the earth and say, now I want you to dream of an erection. And, well, I don't, I don't I'm going to say, you know what? <laughs> Gay missionaries, out of the house. <laughs> These two boys like pussy. Out of the house. You're not going to recruit people to be gay just because they have two mothers or two fathers. Most scientific, in fact, all scientific information uh, clearly shows that uh, um, same-sex attraction is at birth. It's not something that's a learned behavior. So anyway, my computer is jumping here. It's probably saying, get the hell off of here. So anyway, uh, you can get the, uh, the Lesbo book uh, up in Davis uh, County now. And uh, if you don't want your kids engaging in certain activities, you know what? Just tell them. Don't do that shit. Thanks.